Welcome to Euro PCR 2025. I'm Dr. Ronnie Matthew from the Lissy Hospital, Cochin, India. And with me today is Dr. Florim Kukli from Lucerne, Switzerland. Nice to have you. So this year there's been growing interest in drug-coated balloons. Florim, what do you think of the idea of leaving nothing behind? Well, Ronnie, you know, we have been doing stents since 1992. It's a long time and I think it's, it's also the time to start leaving stents behind. And I think uh, DCB is a good way of starting to uh, um, leave nothing behind. Uh, maybe it's not the only way, but I think it's an exciting journey and I think it's a journey where uh, with a train, I think in the beginning the train was boarded maybe with, with just a few passengers. But now it seems like the train is overloaded. So the, the many, many colleagues of us um, uh, hop on this journey and I think it's, uh, let's, let's see where this takes us. In my opinion, um, also there is certain situations where you are actually also happy to use uh, drug coated balloons. Um, there will be uh, many indications where stents do still well, but there is indications where also a DCB makes sense from the clinical perspective. The question now I have is, are all DCBs the same? Do we have a class effect like we had with the stents, Ronnie? I think the short answer is no, because I think each DCB is constructed differently. You have different drugs. You have the device itself that needs to be loaded with the drug taken through your guiding catheter. The drug should not leave the balloon. So you must have some technology for that. You must have a technology by which the drug goes to the vessel wall, remains there and acts as a non-proliferative agent. So I think different technologies, different DCBs, they don't have the class effect. So I think uh, over a period of time, a number of DCBs have come into the market. Do you have any particular DCB that you think fits into these characteristics to make it more effective and efficient? As you mentioned before, um, I think there is basically two things we need to achieve. We need to deliver the drug and we need to deliver also the device because mm -hmm. without the device we cannot deliver the drug. So um, in terms of, of this, there is many devices. There is, um, that's why it's a bit difficult to choose now uh, which device to use. I think the Protégé balloon is, is a good way forward because of its unique technology and, and the way the, the balloon is scrimped um, with the wing seal technology. You, uh, you have a very flexible balloon, so you can deliver the balloon around curves, you know, through a calcified circumflex. And the second, because the, the drug is hidden, um, you can also deliver the drug. Because how many times you have tried to deliver the ECB, but you, you cannot deliver it, you take it out, you look at the balloon, it's empty. The drug is gone in the body, but not, not in the lesion. So I think this particular uh, balloon offers some advantages which are very exciting and help me in my daily life. Now, um, we, which are the situations in your daily life, Ronnie, where you think, well, here I really need a DCB. This is a clinical need. I, I have to use a DCB and, and prefer a DCB over a stent. Yeah, I think in 2025, I use a very pragmatic approach to DCBs. Uh, whenever I feel the situation where a drug eluding stent would be less optimal, I think a drug coated balloon has a place. For example, other than, of course, instant restenosis and small vessels, which we all accept, uh, situations in diabetics where you have long and diffuse disease, bifurcations for use in side branch, complex lesions, as you said, you know, where, where, where sending a stent in would be very difficult, a DCB would be ideal. And most importantly, in patients with high bleeding risk, when you do not want a prolonged DAPT. These are some of the situations where I would today use a DCB. Having said this, uh, Florim, what do you think is the future of DCBs? I mean, do we have enough evidence? What is the sort of evidence that we are collecting towards the use of DCB in de novo lesions? That's a very good question. I think the evidence is there, but it's not enough evidence to, to tell uh, everyone now you are doing something wrong if you don't use DCP. But we have to generate the evidence. So we are planning actually a trial where I'm the PI. It's a SPARKS trial. And in this trial, we want to randomize 
complex lesions. Lesions, as you mentioned, where stents fail or are likely to fail. Diabetes, highly calcified lesions, chronic occlusions, long lesions, uh, bifurcations. Because I think there we have a clinical need for something different because stents don't do very well in these uh, particular situations. So um, let's, let's see where uh, this journey takes us. But I think as we generate more evidence, we will see also if, if DCB will be the solely treatment for the future or if in the future we will maybe uh, have some type of hybrid approach. I think we have to see what the future brings. Perfect, Florim. I think uh, DCBs today have gone beyond ISR. I mean, essentially, as you said, DCBs are there to facilitate our life in interventional cardiology, use it where we think uh, a drug alluring stent may cause a problem in future. Use it in situations like long diffuse disease, push the envelope further, probably into larger de novo lesions. Hopefully this trial would be a positive trial. And on that note, the idea of leaving nothing behind. Thank you, Florim, for being with us. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for this talk.